Gus Bucket. Oh. Welcome back to another episode on b Hall Reviews in Gaming and Entertainment. In this episode, we take a look into a game that definitely got their inspiration from the 1990s arcade and 16-bit era with their newly released beat em up Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge. Growing up, some of the best games I have ever played were from the arcades. The four-player plus variety from Turtles in Time, X-Men, Simpsons, and Aliens vs. Predators were some of the absolute favorites of my games of that time. I wasn't able to enjoy them until the Super Nintendo's version of Turtles in Time, which to me at that time was pretty much an arcade perfect game. Thanks to emulation, we can revisit those games of the past again. And here is a brand new sequel of sorts with Shredder's Revenge. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge was developed by Tribute Games and released by Dotemu in 2022 for Windows, Linux, Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, and the Xbox One. Coming off the heels of a fantastic brawler with Streets of Rage 4, I was extremely ecstatic to revisit yet another game made today with that was truly inspired by the past. First things first, let's talk about the gameplay. The game is fun and I mean playing each character is different and definitely feels very different from one another and I think that's a fantastic decision. The game does not feel like Turtles in Time at all. Each character has a different speed, power, combo, and they feel much different in general. Always being a Leonardo character, I found myself jumping ship to April O'Neil as one of the players of choice due to her fast combos, supers, and overall action. There is also a progression system that gives the players much more moves and super opportunities as you progress through the game, making your playthrough with your character of choice that much more important as you level them up just like an action RPG. Of course, there are playthroughs with seven different characters with Casey Jones after you beat the game once. After playing through the game in about two and a half hours straight, there isn't much to do after that. I myself played the game about three times straight with friends and the public online and found the game fun, but like other past brawlers, done after a couple playthroughs. The progression system does help, but only for so long and in a couple of days you won't be playing this game anymore. The story is simple, where Shredder and the Foot Clan search for the city for Krang's body and repairing him and pretty much getting revenge. The cutscenes are short and sweet and pretty much has the turtles and friends giving chase to the Foot Clan till the very end. Very easy to follow and fun to see which characters you will see next from the 90s television show. For me, it was fun seeing the toy figures from the past come back to life, having to explain much of it to my son, of course. The visuals are some of the best pixel art I have ever seen and is very colorful to the eye. I never once saw any slowdown in the chaos on screen where is the biggest issue I have had with the game. I complained heavily with Shoots of Rage 4 only being 2 player co-op online. With Shredder's Revenge we have up to 6 player co-op and this brings a huge issue when playing in Total Chaos. Now that's 
Another good reason to play April O'Neil, Horse Splinter, and Casey Jones are they don't have the shades of green like the other turtles. This makes it easier for you to track your character and where you are on screen. Even being a non-turtle will still be hard in tracking all of the chaos on screen. My friends and I found it suitable for private games with three players is just about right. Being able to fully enjoy the game is with friends, but the higher you go, the more feeling you're left out as enemies on screen compound as many players there are. The sound does bring back the iconic soundtrack as well as some new updated sound never before heard that caught my ear. Although fun to hear voices and the characters, it can be annoying to hear the same catchphrases over and over again. Arcade and story mode are exactly the same without the world map in the story mode, where you can jump around replaying past levels. Arcade mode just plays from beginning to end, just like the arcade. The game is presented well, at the right price being under $25, that brings you a fun beat-em-up that is right around the brand and also pushes the genre with better gameplay, supers, and combos, and does not disgrace the past. Although too chaotic at times on screen, you can never say that this game isn't a blast to play with friends. The main feeling is the experience the game does, and it does it superbly. I was instantly transported back in time where I was in the arcades playing with others only to do this at home online. Just playing the turtles alone brought that huge smile on my face as I played through the game remembering the old cartoon as well as how much this game has been the same and how much they actually changed it as well. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge gets an 8.5 out of 10 for its perfect recreation of the past arcade and making it better in every case from the gameplay to the visual. You get the whole package at two and a half hours playthrough as its weakest link. That's it for this look at Shredder's Revenge. Please like and subscribe if you like my videos. Be ho out and great. Take us out of here and I will see you all next upload. Damn.